So I moved from. Uh, so it wasn't a long period. No, it's a six months. It's actually you might be better in medicine now than me. <laughs> no, yeah. I, if you, if you fall down, I'll pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's how I moved to clinical research right. again. Um, mm-hmm. A pioneer in that field. Mm-hmm. There were not very many doctors mm-hmm. doing research. Mm-hmm. And so joined his team, mm. and I found it very interesting because we used to work with sex workers mm. in from Majengo, mm-hmm. from Pumwani. Mm. We used to work with uh, HIV was a big thing that time because right. that's that's early two thousand, maybe around two thousand and four, five mm-hmm. there. Mm. And we used to work with discordant couples, mm. so it was exciting mm. because you get to see. You get to visit, can you imagine going to a, a brothel in Pumwani? Because mm-hmm. you have to recruit patients, mm-hmm. I mean clients, mm-hmm. into the studies. Mm-hmm. So it was, it, was, it was seeing Nairobi again in a very different light. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I remember I've been cushioned on this side mm-hmm. of uh, the university side mm-hmm. and also let's say Buruburu Don Home. Mm-hmm. So not, not mm-hmm. really your mm-hmm. majengos of this world. Yeah. But I think that's where I grew my career of um, public health public health yeah. also just understanding that the person presenting to you with something mm. has so many things going around them yeah so you will be treating this cough but mm. you don't know that this cough is caused by the dust mm. in mm. The, in the house mm. they're living so you mm. keep on treating the cough but you're not mm. looking at why is this person coming back or you come treat this child who has uh, malnutrition but you don't know you know that is all they they have in their house. You you're telling them go eat this and that and that, mm. but you're not trying to establish where they're going to get that from because mm. that mm. they can afford porridge and potatoes. Mm. And I see, right. yeah, proteins are foreign to them, especially animal protein. Yeah. So I worked there for a year mm. and then I moved to um, so another project. Your early project was you are talking about the one that was HIV. Yeah. Working with discarded couples. Yes. And sex and workers. Sex workers yeah. All right. okay. But I moved to another project still within the University of Nairobi. Mm-hmm. So this is under Kenya AIDS Vaccine Initiative. Mm-hmm. But now in uh, Kangemi. Mm-hmm. Again, that's where I started now leading studies. Mm-hmm. And we started working with even men who have sex with men. Mm-hmm. You know, those days it was At taboo. Time, yes. There was such conversations that yeah, you would actually we had. Yeah, we were one of the pioneer research mm-hmm. sites. Mm. In fact, there used to be Kangemi, mm. that's under the University of Nairobi. Right. Kilifi, mm-hmm. under Cambry, and Walter Reed in Kericho. Mm. The 2005, 6? Yeah, now that's from 2005 mm. all the way to, because mm. I stayed there four years mm. to two, 2009. Mm. Yeah, so I used to work. How was the uptake of um, of such a research oh, it at was, the time? It was, it was an it was, MSM targeting yes. research at the time. It wasn't it wasn't easy because the community. First of all, remember we are housed within a health center. Yeah, that's Kangemi, mm-hmm. and within the health center they had a, a social hall, and mm. the guys guys used to come and lift weights there. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm. so it was a gym of sorts. Mm-hmm. I know these guys are pumped. Mm. And then now the men who have sex with men, especially the queens, yeah, we call them queens, mm. they'd go and start flirting or trying oh, to with sit. the bodybuilders? Yeah. Oh. And you see these guys, of course, they don't take it kindly. How can a fellow man be flirting with me? Mm. So there's a time we're almost uh, burnt down. Your office. project was almost Yeah, down. because mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, the community said, what are you bringing to our children? Mm. This is for Because, you know, those guys would come the MSMs would come dressed up, mm. yeah. In fact, some would have better makeup than you would, mm. yeah. And you know, talk. I don't know if uh, you've interacted with the MSMs. They're very nice people, mm. Mm. but they're also very uh, expressive. Mm. Yes, <laughs> mm. and uh, I think it was just a shocker. We had to do a lot of debriefing mm. for the staff, mm. especially those who'd internalize. Mm. And um, the, we had elderly, let's say, nursing staff mm. or psychologists. Mm. And I remember Sam would confess and say, you know, when I go home and I see my son offers to go and cook, they would feel, ah, now he started showing tendencies of uh, mm. being feminine. Mm. So all those we had to unlearn. Mm. And we had to, to learn how not to internalize or, you know, take these things and transfer them to right. whatever we're seeing. Right. Yeah, but um, it was also interesting because at some point... 
we had to introduce a biometric system because mm -hmm. you know our studies used to give an allowance a transport allowance mm -hmm. and this became for some 1000 shillings is a lot of money uh. and if they're coming from far you have to pay for their bus ticket you have to send them transport so someone would say i'm in mombasa yeah. for work yeah so since you need them to come for the study they're due maybe it's every three months yeah You'd send them the. They'll say the ticket is two thousand or three thousand, mm -hmm. and mm. you send twice. I mean, mm. two way. Yeah. So what would happen? Of course, there's a lot of fraud mm. because people can show up. You, I'm, I'm not present to to certify that you're actually in Mombasa. Mm. But also, people say double registering because you see now, you register in Kilifi, you register in Kangemi, you register in Kerich. Right. So it looks like the study is three are three different people, but mm. it's the same person. Uh. So by the time I was leaving, they'd introduced, I think, a biometric system mm. so that you're not able to do double registration. Mm, mm. Those uh, are the tricks. The, the I mean, yeah, I those think are it's in just interesting things. Kenyans that, being Kenyans. Because yeah, yeah. you also had discordant couples and yeah. they used to do something similar. Mm. Like I'd know I'm HIV positive mm. and I know you are recruiting for mm. couples because we'd send peer educators, mm. yeah? Mm. We use a snowballing method to get clients. Mm -hmm. So of course people would know so and so is positive, right? Um, and then what they do I'd get you, mm. and they know your status is negative, and mm. say, mm. let's go and pose as a couple. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so they mm. register as a couple. You think, oh, you've gotten uh, mm. clients into the study, mm. only to find out mm. after grilling. Oh, mm. I mean, I was just picked from along mm. the road. Mm. I was told to come and pose as a husband. Yeah. It was actually very bad at that time. Mm -hmm. Now there's a bit of um, openness. Mm. And uh, no, I'm saying in terms of acceptance for men who have sex right. with men. Right. Because at that time, even getting care, medical care, they'd mm. say they've gone to, there was an STI clinic in, in the city. Mm -hmm. And you know, the health worker said, why do you have gonorrhea of the anus, you know? So they'd refuse to treat them. And you see, for us, that is breaking a Hippocratic oath because you should not judge the client who's in front of you. Yeah, yeah so we had, those things are very common. They'd come, you know, things, small ailments that could be managed. Mm. So we were identified as a safe space for them, for many of them. Mm. Uh, but one thing that I still remember, of course, uh, the other fun parts were going to recruit them in, in upmarket clubs. So funny thing is, <laughs> This yeah. this uh, the 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 lifestyle was well known. Yeah, it it was like a secret cult at that time. Mm. So because of the the stigma that they would face, mm. but somehow in the high end clubs, in fact, most of those clubs had red number plate cards packed there. Oh. So it is it was almost a stigma if you are in a lower socioeconomic status, mm. but. The clubs were going to were in Kilimani, in mm. Lavington. Mm. I mean, it was just openly expressed, expressed, yeah, mm. by both the uh, international community, by the locals. Because then we had, um, we needed to recruit people, and we needed to to recruit genuine people. We mm. also had frauds. There are exactly. people because exactly. this is this is money you're giving reimbursement, ideally, mm. It's, mm. but it's still money, mm. and. Um, you know, someone would come and say, you see, nothing stops you from telling me you, you are a man who has sex with other men. Mm. Like, I, I I wouldn't be there and say, prove it <laughs> by having sex with another man. Mm. So there's a lot of fraud also. So you had mm. to be very careful in how you do the recruitment mm. because others you get so many people and we used to really sift out a number. Mm. But I think one of the things that stood out for me was the naivety and also ignorance mm around safe, safe sex mm. for them mm. and this was because of the the issue of um, the billboards or the materials around hiv prevention at that time were always a heterosexual couple mm. so you'll get this young boy test because we had to test them mm. um, to get into the study mm. and you know over 40 percent at that time were turning hiv positive and mm. they never knew mm -hmm. And you know, many of them would say, you know, we were told, you see, even the billboards are saying, you know, it's heterosexual sex that mm -hmm. you need a condom. Mm. Anal sex, you don't need a condom right. because it's safe. Mm. Yeah, so I think that was a very unfortunate, again, a public health lesson mm. 
where because of the stigma and the discrimination and the fact that we call ourselves a Christian nation, mm. um, we don't want to talk about these taboo topics. Right. And so it reflects even in the materials yeah. and unfortunately trickles down to the message we pass. Exactly. So when you see around the late 2000s, um, 2008 going upwards, mm. now materials started changing and yeah. they started including uh, men who have sex with men yeah. it's because yeah. of that kind of yeah. feedback that our research was showing yeah. that yeah. these people are um, have a very big need mm. for the messaging mm. but you are stuck in yeah. this other way yeah. of yeah how would you go uh, um, how would the you are working closely also with ministry of mm. health mm. at the time which is government mm. um I don't know at the time if you've won any policy advocacy hat or role mm. or that has started a lot of what you're doing is clinical research if it started informing policy at the time maybe it's too early in your journey to discuss that but how would that come into play yeah. especially in, on issues of hiv discordancy mm -hmm. msm how would all of that then contribute so that even such messaging that mm. you're talking about mm begin find, finding its way comfortably mm. into like the Kenya AIDS strategic mm. plan and mm. stuff like mm. that. Yeah, so I'd say indirectly I contributed, mm -hmm. um, maybe because of my my position at the time. Mm. It was more of my bosses who would be sitting on that, those spaces. Mm -hmm. So I know we did contribute towards the changing of the messaging mm -hmm. because there was pressure now from all the sites that mm. are managing mm. Um, MSMs. Mm. There was also a um, policy on awareness on what is called what value clarification, yeah, right for health workers. Yeah, and we did that a lot, mm. and mm. especially um, the teams that would see mm. some of this. Mm. It's okay. Yes, proceed. And then mm. the other one was on um, issues of management. Mm. So, because, you know, when you're taught in medical school, you're taught about, let's say, vaginal warts mm. or penile warts. Mm. But anal warts at that time was rare mm. because who's presenting mm. in a whole teaching hospital with mm. them? So, you're also encountering things that are new. And taboo almost. Yes. Mm. And and how do you start managing this new thing? So, there's also contribution to the science around um, health mm. for people, men who had sex with men. Mm other men mm. but we also had funny moments <laughs> mm -hmm. what are some of those like uh, mm -hmm. some would come and break up oh yeah the other thing was about uh, confidentiality mm. yeah about couples because mm -hmm. you know previously if if um if we were a couple mm. heterosexual couple and mm. you were positive mm. the health worker would tell me so the law changed and said it is um as a health worker you're you not cannot. you cannot break it that confidentiality yeah. yeah yeah so that that became an issue because it, yeah. here you are stuck with a discordant couple mm. but you can't unless they came they consented to be tested mm. at the same time mm. you can't disclose the status to yeah. the negative person yeah which in a way are you doing harm yeah by it, it, yes it, it's it's yeah a, it's a conundrum it's it, heavy it is very heavy it was yeah. very heavy actually yeah. for many and health um, workers yeah yeah so we had those issues yeah then we had issues of uh, because msm lifestyle was a taboo mm. there was pressure on the men so we had two kinds of msms mm -hmm. the ones who that was inert so to speak mm -hmm. or they they said they were born that way mm -hmm. And then there are those ones who are doing it for sex work. Mm. And we had many mm. who are heterosexual, but they're doing, mm. they're having sex with other men. Mm. So the ones, especially who were innate, mm -hmm. many of them would be pushed by society to get married to a woman. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But then they still have this closeted lifestyle. Mm. And so what would happen is that we ended up as a society, exposing mm -hmm. quite a number of women towards one HIV infection, mm -hmm. but two to a life, you know, to a, a miserable relationship mm. because this person is doing this for society's sake. Mm. 
and a couple of times those women would come because you'd you'd have a a sense mm. that your man is not really exhibiting the traits of mm. what a man according to our society should have mm. Mm. so they'd come to the site mm. and maybe they'd get a uh, wind that they were part of the study mm. And they'd confront us and they tell us, tell me, oh, wow. yeah, I hear my husband is he's coming here he's for coming, this. Yes. Mm. So you see, again, you're bound by confidentiality, especially for a clinical trial, leave alone yeah, being an obviously. MSM. Yeah, yeah. You're not yeah. supposed to disclose that. Yeah. So, and so they need to volunteer that information yeah. themselves. Yeah. So we, we had situations where, um, yeah, those uh, those those are they are not uh, they are not um, easy. Yeah, because yeah, I would put myself in that lady's shoe. Oh dear. And I would be like, if, how do you if handle I that? Though? Like, how do you navigate? Yeah, sometimes the counselors would work with the guy. Yeah. To get them to a space where they are able to come out. Yeah. Sometimes they wouldn't. And yeah. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. What yeah. were what so what what was the big research finding from this study? So we are doing. At the time, we were doing two studies. Mm -hmm. One was following up um, discordant couples because mm -hmm. we were trying to study why is it despite them having unprotected sex, you still counsel them on protected sex, mm -hmm. the negative cup spouse mm. would still, still not contract. Yeah? yeah. So that was, um, it was an immunology study because mm -hmm. we take their blood samples and see uh -huh. what is it in their... Yeah in their uh, immune system mm. that is giving them that kind of protection. Mm. Same thing with sex workers, mm -hmm. especially the very long-term sex workers. Mm. Um, and this, that's a study we were doing in Pumwani, mm -hmm. Majengo. Majengo, yeah. Yeah, there'd be these sex workers who'd never turn positive. Mm. And you know they're not using condoms. Mm. They were carriers? No, they them? just never used to be positive. They, just, they were just so negative. So they're never using protection? Yeah, and they're not turning positive. Despite whichever client. Yes, because you know their yeah. condom is, uh, yeah. is, is is not heard of. Yeah. It's not commonly used. And what? <laughs> so, yeah. What? Yeah, so there was that study uh -huh. just uh -huh. trying to see what is it in them. Yeah. And it was a multi-center study. Yeah. And then there was a study on um, the men who have sex with men. Because yeah. also, anal sex has a higher risk of Infection, trans transmission. Yeah, yeah, because the skin is very fragile. Yeah. So also studying that population. Right. Generally, we are trying to look for an HIV vaccine. Mm. And that's what it's called Kenya AIDS Vaccine yeah, Initiative. Yeah. And it was also a pioneer space. Mm. And I remember when we first into, started doing the vaccine trials, mm -hmm. you know, we got so much condemnation from yeah. the church, from yeah. the society. We are yeah. injecting people mm. with the virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first, the first uh, volunteer was mm. a medical doctor, a mm. lady. Mm. So she said, I'm a doctor, I'm volunteering myself to be, just mm. to prove to you that I'm not getting the, the virus, mm. yeah? Mm. So that was also interesting because uh, we had to educate the Science and Technology Institute because they're the ones giving approvals for studies. Mm. So they'd never encountered these uh, vaccine trials mm. and it's HIV vaccine. Mm. Uh, we had to educate the society, we had to educate the clients, getting clients, getting mm. people to come and yeah. say, yeah. give me that. It's like now we're doing the... COVID. COVID vaccine and mm. we have a vaccine yeah. uh, hesitancy. Many anti vaxxers Yeah, yeah, yeah so you can yeah. imagine now that it was an HIV, an yeah. HIV that time was. And it had stayed with us for a while. Yes. So it, everyone was sus, you know, suspicious about yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we had all mm. these uh, myths, myths that we needed to bust. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really, I think for me that gave me a very good connection mm -hmm. between research and public health. Yeah. Because the science, mm. so that's why I said medicine is a science and an art. It is. Because you know one plus one is two. Yeah. But that two is a different interpretation to the person who has to mm. take that medicine or mm. take that vaccine. Mm. So we have to have a lot of anthropology. Mm. You have to have a lot of uh, sociology. Mm. Yeah, you have to. So those are the things that really interested me, mm. interested me in terms of the research space. Mm. And traveling. Yeah. Oh, yes, I saw it traveling. Oh, you moved yeah. Quite a bit. Not just, a I mean, lot. Uh, Majango, uh, Kilifi, yeah. um, uh, Kericho. Kericho, but also to the, to the yeah. partners yeah. across board. Across board. Who, are the, who are the partners? 
who are the funders for this? Yavi, International Yavi. AIDS Vaccine Initiative. Right. We have we had University of Manitoba in Canada. Yeah. So we'd go present papers. So th that's where the training for presentations yeah. started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how to put together. Uh, results, results. How, to, how to weigh how to read papers because science yeah. anyone can publish so True. you have to know how to assess yeah. whether something is holding water yeah. or not what was your first international travel True. where you presented and how was that experience was it a conference was it an yeah. AIDS conference it was somewhere? an AIDS conference where Sweden Sweden yeah, I didn't really present, uh -huh. but I remember I'd never gone to, of course, a European country, number one. Yeah. But number two, I'd never gone in winter. Okay, it, was, it wasn't uh, that cold, but yeah. I'm telling you, I did not know about uh, wearing, you know, thermal yeah. vests and mm -hmm. whatnot, and I went mm -hmm. in jeans. Oh, my goodness. Um, uh, crazy, jeans, crazy. and I think I dre dresses. Oh. Oh. I have never frozen like that. And then, mm -hmm. because you've been given this allowance, so you want to save. Yeah. So you look for the cheapest hotel, oh, yeah. and they didn't know what backpackers were. Yes. But I chose backpackers because it was like a fraction of the hotel they were recommending. So, again, I didn't know how to read maps. Oh, my god. Because goodness. this backpacker place was, I don't know how many kilometers away from, from the, from the, the train station. Mm -hmm. Train station first, because oh. I made a big luggage landing. So walking, Uzuri, the, the streets are paved. Yeah. So dragging a suitcase all the way, found the back, the 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 place. I think the Google Maps wasn't there, so yeah. I leave alone. Even even if I wanted to know. Yeah. And then um, went in, found it's a dormitory with deckers. So I paid for that day. I bought my decker, and then I think I went out to look for food or something. When I came back, I was alone. Uh, when I came in, I was the only occupant. When I came back, I came and found, you know, the lower deckers had been taken and there were guys. There were men. <laughs> I was shocked. So I went to ask the reception, why does the room have men meet? And he said, this is backpackers, they share. Yeah, you share genders. <laughs> backpacking is whoever you find. It can be a child, it yeah, can be an adult, it can be a, an old person, a young person. Yeah. It's community yeah, living. Yeah, so, so ah, I checked out of that hotel. Uh, so I asked for the refund. They said, no, 24 hours notice. So I forfeited that. Uh, yeah. And you know, that's painful. It that is. Money. It is. I ended up that oh, expensive hotel. So they said, where? Oh, yeah. The same and, one. Mm, I mean, you're not going to. Yeah, you're fast. And you can imagine again dragging that yeah. suitcase. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but it was interesting. So those, um, <laughs> what I liked about those exposures is that they would identify young scientists, young yeah. researchers, then offer opportunities, mm, mm. exchange programs. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a lot of that. Mm, yeah, mm. So that, that was a good exposure for me. And, and, and for you, who then become, you know, like a bona fide traveler. Yeah. Oh, no, I enjoy <laughs> yeah, the traveling. You would also really enjoy the travel experiences. Exactly. And you're going to talk about a lot of that as we continue your story. Mm. They, they would, they would, the travel moments for you would, yeah. would, would, would stick out in every one of these. Yes. In every one of these, not just locally, but yeah. across, across the globe. Yeah, I've, I've traveled a lot for work. Yeah. Thank you.